Hello, uh, thank you. My name is Ricarda Götz Preisner. I'm doing my PhD in game studies about diversity and inclusivity in games. And my poster talk today is not so much about my PhD uh, studies per se, but um, it surrounds it. It's a short story of the last seven years of oppressive mechanisms for women in the game development culture. Starting with the infamous Gamergate, we heard about it a lot already. Um, a lot has been said and criticized about the mechanisms in game development, especially for women and people of color. In very, very short, because it ended in a rather long odyssey still today, Gamergate was about the false accusation of a frustrated ex-boyfriend that game developer Zoe Quinn would sleep with journalists to get good coverage for her games. This led not only to the doxing of her data, graphic threats of violence to Quinn and other women in the gaming world, it drove some also to cancel events, flee their homes, or seek actual police protection. This was 2015. We were all hoping that Gamergate not only shed a light on the conditions women work in the gaming industry, but also how we as players feel. And we thought things might change. Not so much. In 2018, the gaming website Kotaku investigated the giant of US game developers, Riot Games, who produce, for example, League of Legends, which a lot of women actually play, over their gender-based harassment case. Hundreds of workers joined the prote protest in support of the plaintiffs. In the end, and as part of the settlement, the Riot agree Games agreed to pay out at least $10 million to approximately 1,000 women that worked in the company in the last five years and faced gender-based discrimination. Another company, famous for also very colorful and inclusive games, such as Rayman Legends, the French company Ubisoft made headlines in 2020 for misogynist bullying and sexual harassment. Allegations stand that the company did nothing when complaints were put forward from employees. Even though Ubisoft thereafter promised some swift retribution for offenders and a transformation of the company culture, little has been done in the last two years. 2020 was also the year a variety of different stories published on Twitter gave examples of the hardship women still face in the industry all around the world by being pressured into sex, being belittled or gaslit by their male superiors and colleagues by a so-called bro culture. And finally, just recently, an Austrian game production studio, Moon Studio, which has produced one of my favorite games actually, Ori and the Blind Forest, as well as Ori and the Will of the Wisps, has been called out for its oppressive culture by multiple workers. According to VentureBeat, the founders propagated an environment where casual racism, sexism, and bullying was on a daily agenda. These allegations for once even showed some results. Microsoft ended their partnership with Moon Studio which is unfortunately for those who love their games, and we still hope maybe the company will get over themselves and change their work ethic, but still shows that toxic and work environments in the gaming industry do not have to stay that way. It seems even game companies that actually claim to value the work of women and create rather diverse and inclusive games have game production work environments and mechanisms that make it very difficult for women, and especially women of color, working in this still white and male dominated sector. Just these examples show that being a woman in the game development is more often than not met with sexism, harassment, and sexual predation. Emily Greer, CEO of Double Loop Games and the Independent Game Developers Association Vice Chair sums it up perfectly. Games is a passion industry that people are eager to join. So company actually can easily replace employees. It's also drawing the majority of workers out of a core gaming culture that very much sees itself as a boys club, which affects the game industry, which affects the gaming culture in a reinforcing loop. 
Workplace sexism is not unique to video games. Just ask women in tech, film, or politics or media. But the gaming sphere has earned its own place when it comes to misogyny and sexism. As we also heard in yesterday's keynote by Howard Coburg, games and the game production um, sphere were sort of a refugee for men who allegedly did not profit from the patriarchy and they thought they were safe from women, but not anymore because hashtag women in games. Thank you for listening.